What's up everyone, this is Hemorrhoid aka Deep Fryer, bringing you another Super String video. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing fantastic. It has been a few days since I've spoken with you. I got kind of busy with a few things, but uh, we're back here bringing you the videos that you want to see and talking about our favorite game. Now, I do want to let you know that I have completed Abyss 41 with a rather unique team, or at least I feel like it's somewhat unique for the content. Gonna be bringing that to you as soon as I can, have a lot of fun with it, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about Abyss 39. Now it has been several days since I did Abyss 39, but we're gonna watch it together here on the screen, um, and we're gonna go over you know, my thought processes and the strategies that I used to clear this stage. Now this stage, I, I had a little bit of fun with this stage also. And I did want to showcase a newer unit. N not really a newer unit, but a newer unit from my roster that I had built up to have a bit of fun with. So let's take a look together at... Let's take a look at Yak. That's right, everyone's favorite specialist with the immaculate hair. Now Yak, if you will notice, his skill 4 says, uh, deal damage to an enemy, and the target will be inflicted with silence and damage received for two turns. Now you can also use souls that that you acquire throughout the battle as units take their turns to hit more than one target with this attack. So you can potentially hit the entire enemy team with silence and damage received, which is very, very strong. So let's take a look at how I used Yak to clear Abyss 39. First, we're going to take a look at the additional threats. Okay. The additional threats say, let's read it together, every fifth turn, your agents will lose hit points. Each time an enemy is defeated, all remaining enemies will receive five turns of attack boost buff. So, what we're thinking here is we definitely want some sustain. We want the ability to keep our team alive over a period of time because every five turns they're going to be losing health. Now we also want to be very aware that every, uh, every time an enemy is defeated the rest of the enemies are going to be receiving an attack boost buff. And as you are probably aware in these higher abyss stages, you are going to have to deal with this attack buff one way or another. So you're either going to have to kill all of the enemies at the same time or very close to the same time, or you're going to have to have a way to deal with the attack buff. Now, one other good thing about Yak, um, actually I tell you what, Let's just watch the video together, and you guys will see another good thing about Yak as we watch the footage. So, you know, let, let's go ahead and jump in. Let's watch. Let's go ahead and start the footage now. So, as you can see... Okay, let me just uh, pause right here for just a second. I'm bringing Kang Hyon as my tank. He is the best defensive tank in the game. He starts each match with octoparticles, and these octoparticles reduce the damage he receives by a significant amount. And he can apply the guard buff to your team for two turns. So automatically, as you know, as as we're going to see, uh, he is definitely going to be able to protect your team from taking significant damage. Now let's talk about who we're up against. We're up against Lilia. Now, Lilia is one of the top damage dealers in the game. She has some 
devastating AoE attacks, well at least one devastating AoE attack, that is her ultimate. It's going to hit three targets and it can apply bleed if she crits. She also has an absolutely devastating single target attack on her skill three. So we definitely want to be careful with Lilia. Now the enemy team also has Kang Haion, Hasiwu, and Wan Miho. So as you can imagine this is a bit of a nightmare because Hasiwu can give that attack and crit chance buff. Wan Miho is going to be reducing the enemy skill cooldowns. So we want to be very, very careful on this stage. Even though this is not one of the nightmare stages, this is a stage that you cannot go to sleep on because if you do, the enemy is going to give you a very, very hard time. So who else am I bringing to this fight? I'm bringing Kira. Now I'm bringing Kira because I want to be able to take out the boss very quickly because you're not going to be able to survive for long against an attack unit like Lilia. Now, Kang Hyon can buy us a couple of turns with his, you know, um, uh, his overabundance of defense, but after that guard buff falls off of our team, we're going to start dropping like flies if we have not dealt with Lilia. Now, I'm also using Kim Bong Chun because, my gosh, Kim Bong Chun is a DPS monster. When he brings that drone out, anytime any of your team attacks, he is going to use his drone to add a significant amount of DPS on top of your team's attacks. And of course, I already told you that we're using Yak. So we're going to showcase some of Yak's skills in this video. So let's start. Here we go. Here are the Fate Ties, if you guys are curious about the fake ties I use. Those aren't super critical the way they were in Suki Raid 9, but let's jump in here and talk about this match. So here we go, Abyss 39. Let's have some fun. Now we're opening with Hyon, and he's going to go ahead and use the Superhero Ultimate Skill 4. He's going to put this guard on your team, and... Okay, now... Pause. Here is something interesting with Kira. Typically, you would go immortal. You would use your immortal skill the first turn with Kira. And that's not a bad move. That's typically a very smart way to play. But, since I know that my tank, Kang Hyon, has used his guard skill on my team, and the other team does not have an overabundance of dispel units and units that can take out a member of my team in a very short amount of time, I have decided to go with an attack from Kira to open this fight. And the reason I'm doing that is because, as I told you, the enemy also has Kang Hyon on their team, and each time we attack Kang Hyon, we remove some of those Octa Particles. And we want to take him out as quickly as possible because he is going to be protecting the enemy team just as well as he protects our team. Now let's go ahead and start. Now with Kim Bong Chun, I decided to open with the drone. Let's go ahead and get that drone out because we want to take out Kang Hai on as quickly as possible. Now, here comes Yak. I'm going to use a plain attack from Yak because I don't have enough souls yet to hit the entire enemy team. Now, I did experiment a little bit with Kang Suho. I wanted to use Kang Suho in his PvP mode to lock down the boss Lilia in PvP mode so that she could not do her AoE attack on my team. And that kind of worked pretty well. And I came really close to clearing this stage with Kang Suho and Yak and a couple of others, but it just ended up not working out because I didn't have Kang Suho built quite as strong as I wanted to. But we'll show Kang Suho in a later Abyss stage, and it's going to be fun, guys. It's going to be fun. So I've gone Immortal with Kira. We have done our stun move. On Kim Bong Chun, we have managed to stun the enemy tank. Now here comes Yak's. AoE attack, the silence, the damage received, 
we're putting the hurt on the enemy. We got a full prop, hang high on his dead, and the enemy is targeting Kira because Kira dropped herself to one hit point. Now we're going to do the AoE taunt with Kang Hyon. We're going to see who we get taunted here. We taunt a two out of three, and that's fine. So here comes Kira with Kira's ultimate. And we say... Lilia goes down. Here goes Yak's skill three. Now Yak's skill three actually steals buffs from the enemy. And since the enemy is are giving themselves attack boost every time an enemy unit dies, Yak was able to steal those attack buffs from the enemy so that they could not use them against us. And now here we are, we're down to one enemy, Hasewu. So as you can see, this has not been too terribly of a hard uh, abyss stage, but at the same time, you know, you do have to at least have somewhat of a strategy to deal with some of these mechanics. So there you have it, Yak gets the finishing blow, but Kira takes the MVP because of that insane ultimate where Kira killed Lilia. There's just some nanobots, we really need those. It is a very scarce resource in Endgame. I believe I uh, use an SS ticket for you guys, just to kind of uh, give you a little bit of bonus footage here at the end. Let's see who I get. I get John Yunga, or is it Jayon Youngha? If you watch my videos, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, there you go. We have four awakenings on Jayon Yonha now. So, we also get a bit of a universe buff. In case you didn't know, the game now has awakening universe buffs for your entire roster. So you want to make sure you take advantage of those. But anyway, that kind of wraps up our footage of Abyss 39. Um, I did kind of put this team together myself. Um, I wanted to showcase Yak because I've been working on Yak lately. And Yak definitely brought the pain to the enemy with that AoE silence and damage received debuff. And we were able to steal some of those attack buffs that the enemy gave themselves as members of the enemy team died. So at, I'm sure you can imagine a very, very good strategy for that type of abyss stage mechanic. But that is going to conclude our discussion on Abyss 39. I do want you guys to be looking out for uh, my videos on Abyss 40 and 41. Those are gonna be coming up very soon. And I'm also gonna have some PVP footage um, coming up to compile for you guys. And we'll have a little bit of fun with some more PVP. And hopefully event PvP comes back soon because I'm going to do some more of that for you guys also because I have a ton of fun doing event PvP with you guys. But anyway, we're going to call it, we're going to call that done and I will talk to you guys next time. This is Hemroid. Welcome to this video's post credit scene. I will let you guys in on a little secret. Do you remember that additional threats image that popped up on the screen earlier in the video? I created that graphic myself. I forgot to put the additional threats on the screen when I originally recorded the video, so I painstakingly recreated the image and made it look exactly as it looked in the game. A spitting image, so to speak. You wouldn't even have known if I didn't just tell you. I totally could have gotten away with it. It will be our little secret. Baby bye 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 for now.